uh, and Miata, it seems when it comes to uh, losing weight, a spoonful of sugar doesn't help the medicine go down. No, uh, clearly not. And you know what? I think the government is absolutely right uh, to put these measures in place. Obesity has been a long-standing problem, and quite frankly, it's been fudged for a really long time. Uh, we know it requires uh, measures in order to shift both cultural and behavioural patterns, but also fundamental societal issues. So, you know, I think the measures they're putting in place, which is constraining advertising, that sort of thing is fine. But I think Nick Timothy is absolutely on the money when he says that this is fundamentally linked to economic issues. And until you deal with the fact that actually for families who are under pressure, who don't have either the means or the time in order to make sure that they're um, feeding their kids right and healthy food that tends to be more expensive food, we're not going to solve the problem. So I think this is the first step, but it needs far, far more uh, deep response from both the government and also from individuals. Now, uh, Miata, I mean, perhaps in the, in the question of diet, uh, it could be, you know, putting what used to be called domestic science back onto the curriculum for everyone might actually uh, be constructive. Yeah, um, look, I think people um, understanding food and having uh, access to, you know, cookery classes or whatever is helpful. But for me, it doesn't go back to the fundamental problem, which is, you know, even when people are equipped that, with that information, the cost of food for some families is prohibitive. Uh, if you want to try and buy healthy, that tends to be far more expensive than processed foods that are also quick, but also tend to be cheaper. So I think it has to be a balanced measure. I think, yes, to educate both kids um, that will become adults about food and nutrition is a good thing, but it's not enough in its own right. I think you've got to do far more. And part of it is systemic and it's economic but part of it is thinking about ways in the interim that we can look to support families. So, you know, free uh, school meals is a good thing. Uh, but, you know, the whole debate we had about meals and hol holidays is really, really pertinent. What are the long-term solutions that says, of course, we've got to change our economy in order to do that. But by the way, in the short term, there are things that we must do to help families to be able to access healthier food that tends to be more expensive food. But in the end, uh, Miata, I mean, you, you work in an economics foundation. It's not going to happen unless people can see some way of generating uh, wealth from the process, is it? Yes and no. So, you know, I, I think the thing that she said that really struck home was, you know, we've been dogged by rough sleeping for years. Uh, and actually, you know, the government managed to get the majority of rough sleepers off the streets. It was a question of political will, it was a question of urgency, and it was a question of necessity. And that's my view on the housing crisis. If we generally chose to grip it, we can grip it. And yes, thinking about ways in which we convert uh, buildings that are in commercial uh, lease at the moment that won't be needed is part of the solution, but also building more is part of the solution. And the thing that we've got to move away from is an over-reliance on the old developer model. We've got you know, six big developers that do much of our building and until we get to a stage where the public sector, both national but critically at regional and local level, is building far more, building affordable homes for people to live in, we're not going to crack the housing crisis. The only times we've built the number of homes we've needed are the times when the public sector, the housing association sector, have stepped in alongside the private sector to build the homes we need. It is a question of political will. It always has been. And I really hope that coming out of the pandemic, this is one of the things that's prioritised. Do you feel sorry uh, for uh, Megan Miata? Definitely been given a rough ride, um, and I think that's been the case for a really long time. I have to say, the thing that struck me uh, with both the coverage and kind of reading the excerpts is just how antiquated, uh, how completely remote and bizarre uh, the whole institution of the monarchy is. Uh, the sort of weird little parlour games between different parts, uh, houses uh, w within the monarchy is so strange and so out of touch with where we are in our modern world and the lives of many people. And I just think that. You know, at some point, we have to reform this institution so it reflects the people that it claims it serves, so it reflects the world in which we exist in rather than the world that existed 200 years ago. So I read it with nothing more than complete astonishment that this institution exists in the form that it does.